American Mac, part two. So I thought while we're waiting for our Citrix VPX server to be ready, I would quickly instance two vanilla, uh, as I said, Windows uh, 2012 R2 standard edition machines. Uh, they're both up and running now. So I thought, well, why don't we set up our websites while we're waiting? So here we are, just logged in, haven't touched this machine. It's literally just been automatically built uh, straight from the order screen. And we're ready to actually add the services that we want. So what do we want? Well, I want to add roles and features. I want to fly through here, just next, next, next. That's absolutely fine. And then we want to go web server IIS. Okay, add features, uh, application server, features, .NET 4.5, that's fine. Yeah, .NET, oh, it's already installed anyway, so that's absolutely fine. So that's good. We've got it. Web server will be fine. Next, next. What do we want on the web server's roles? Well, to be honest, just the standard service will be fine for me at the moment. Let's say install. And that will install our web servers. While that's running, let me drag this window down, start. I'm just gonna start an Internet Explorer. Um, ask me later about the security and once this is installed we should be able to go to our local host okay hit return here and there it is yep that's the standard log on screen now remember I said we would be augmenting this so I want to go to in our file explorer because we want to make a differentiation between these two machines so I want to quickly go to um, it's on C drive inet pub worldwide root IIS start right click on that and open with notepad now you wouldn't normally do this but I'm just wanting to make sure and see the background color we want to change that to ff0000 lovely and file save file exit and then when we redo whoops when we redo this screen there we go we have a red background okay so leave that one i now want to go to the other machine manage add roles and features same again click through there web services add the features next 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 install while that's installing go down here start an explorer ask me later this is just really setting up making sure we're happy where are we in the install procedure? Nearly there. Let's go to 127.0.0.1. There we go. Yep, all there. Well, we can see it's there. So, same again, down to file. Good Lord, these windows come up big. Uh, C, INET pub, root. Uh, see, that's just opened it up. If you double click, it just opens it up. We don't want to do that. We want to right click, open with notepad. And this one's going to be that. It's going to be green. Save, exit. Relo oh. Reload this page. Green. So we have a green and we have a red. And that's what we want. I just want to check the IP address as well. I was over here. My apologies. Right click here. 
open network. Just want to have a look at the properties of this, see what our address is. 10 127 10.127, I think it said. .83.36. There we go. That's what we wanted to see. Back to the other one quickly. And this one is 10.127.83.38. That's what we wanted to see. So our web servers are ready. And that was just a quick, I mean, hey, there's loads to web programming on uh, Microsoft. Um, feel free absolutely to go and check out some of the amazing videos on YouTube on how to get going on ASP.NET and web services on Microsoft. All I've done there is just to very quickly have a red and a green, like I said, so that we can show the load balancing carrying on. Join me in a sec for the VPX. Now we have our uh, web servers all set up and ready to go. We will now very quickly uh, set up our load balancing on our Netscaler. And here is our Netscaler, this machine here. It has a private address, which is what we wanted. We know it also has a public, but it doesn't, oddly enough, come up in the uh, public IP here. So how do we get access to this machine? Well, you can only access it from, uh, or I should say, you can only access its portal manager from the private network. So I've already got my VPN up and running. Again, look at some of my other tutorials for setting up VPN, but we're now into the more advanced stuff. So take it for red, I'm VPNed in on the software private network. Uh, how do we use this machine? Well, we'll click here and we will grab its password first, copy that into our buffer, and then actions, manage device. And when you click on manage device, it will open up, so long as you're VPNed in, the actual console. It's root, and we've got this, so there we go. And we're in. And this is what you will first see. So, first thing to check on your brand new Citrix Netscaler is to go into system here and check your licenses, because sometimes the automated install, it's only happened to be, I think, twice out of about, you know, untold amounts of uh, instancing of these things, that the actual um, licensing didn't come up for whatever reason. If it doesn't, just raise a quick ticket, it takes about 10 minutes, and software will fix the problem. But there we have it, our platinum license, it's all there. Perfect. That's what we wanted to see. Um, from the main page, we can see that this Citrix Netscaler's IP address is this. If you want to see the public IP address, which of course you will, you go down to System, Network, IPs. So let's make a note of these now. So I want to note that it's public IP will be on a 159. So that is 1598. 159, I'm taking this down as well, 8105.100. Okay, now that's not the static. That is its actual public address. Um, it is on the private network, so its private address is 121.172. I'm going to take that down as well. I just want to make a record of these. So excellent. So we know where we are there. Now, what we want to do is go into traffic management and load balancing. Load balancing, as you can see, it doesn't have a yellow exclamation mark in a circle here, which means load balancing is already running, albeit there are no servers defined at all. So we need to add some servers. Well, let's add our two servers. What are we going to call them? Well, let's call it Web1 Service. This will be on an IP address. Well, our first one there a second ago was 10.127.83.36. 
That's fine. You can add comments if you want. I just want to quickly do this. It's green. It can see it. It's pinging it. That's good. Web to service. In fact, I should have named these differently. I'm going to go in and edit the other one to show you how you edit. This is the machine, not the service. 10.127.83.38 was the other one. Create that. That's seen as well. Web 2. Go to this one. If you want to edit it, just go back here to edit. Oops. Won't let me edit the name. Okay, well that's fine. <laughs> Why don't we just delete it then? We'll add it again. Web one machine. Ten dot one two whoops. Ten dot one two seven dot eighty three dot thirty six. Create that. So we've got a web one machine and a web two machine. That's what I wanted to say. It's better to call it machine because this is the server. Now we will have a service. And in the services, we want to add a service which will be web one service. Now you see why I renamed it. We're going to choose an existing server because we have these. Web one service going to web one machine. Port 80, perfect. Back, add. Guess what? Web 2 service. Existing machine. What machine? Web 2 machine. Perfect. So there they are. Our servers and our services are there. Now we lastly need to define the virtual server. Now if we go back to our portal quickly, we want to click on here and go into the machine and our virtual service will appear on this static IP that we asked for in the very first place which is 159 and make a note of this 159 896 or when you're doing it make a note of it 193 this will be our service because it's the public static that we asked for. So if we go back into here, we go to virtual servers, we add. The name of this is external HTTP. And the address we're going to have is 159.8.96.193. It's on port 80 and it's HTTP. So that's all we're doing at the moment. This is just a simple explanation of how to use this. So we go back, down, down, that's fine, and it'll stay down. Why will it stay down? Because we need to go in now and add, because it's currently saying, look, no load balancing virtual service binding. Well, what are we going to bind it to? Well, we have two services that we've defined. So let's add the first one, bind, click again, add binding, click the second one, OK, bind, close. Perfect. Now refresh and see what it says. Lo and behold, it's up. There you go, up and running. So let's grab a web portal and see whether we can uh, get access to this. So I'll go to a brand new page. I'll go to 159.8.96.193. And there it is. There's our red one. Now, because I'm in Chrome, oh, let me just move that down so you can see I've not done any trickery there. Now I'm going to hold the shift key down because this is something that gets people quite often. If I just go refresh again, Goes to green. Refresh again, green. Refresh again, green. Why isn't it load balancing? Oh my god, we've got no load balancing. Well, on Chrome, hold the shift key down, then do refresh. 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 There you have it. 
it's that simple. Load balancing 101. Real simple load balancing, I agree, but we've set up a couple of web servers there, we've set up our VPX, we've set up the HTTP service on it, and it's all there and running. And what can I say? It is that simple. Um, I hope you're getting a lot out of these videos. My name is Eamon Killian. Um, I'm really enjoying doing these videos, and thanks so much to those who have uh, provided feedback and hints and asked me to do stuff that uh, perhaps I haven't covered already. Um, can't thank you enough for watching. Um, join me next time when we do some more stuff on software. Back a quick addendum this part three, and it will be a very quick addendum. I just noticed as I was uh, editing the videos to put them up on the YouTube site that I had made a slight faux pas. Even though we we looked at what I thought was round robining, uh, it defaults to, as we can see here, the method being least connection. So I thought I'd just quickly add an addendum to show you how to change it from its default least connection to be actual round robin, which is what we wanted. So basically log on to your Citrix Netscaler, click on your service, so go to load balancing, traffic management, sorry, load balancing virtual servers, click on your actual service and edit that service. Over here on the right hand side, you will see the method. If we click on that, it brings up our drop down, and in this, we can choose from all of these different methods of load balancing. So, I wanted to change that to round robin, go OK, and now we have our service round robining. And if I go back to my Windows server here, we can see, and I'll Hold the shift key down, we can see it round robbing just like it was for least connection because before the least connection was, you know, the two machines. Um, so effectively they work the same until you have sessions enabled. I just wanted to cover that. My apologies for uh, not noticing that during the main part. So hopefully this addendum closes that off. Thank you very, very much.